A broken road behind me, my memories to guide me. Every day, I'm one step closer to home. I walked lightly out of the downpour and into the dimly lit bar. The rain beat heavily against the old, stained windows. Cigarette smoke filled the room as several ponies sat around the perimeter, keeping mostly to themselves but glancing at me every now and then. As I approached the bar, the mayor behind the counter smiled at me. What can I get for your day, huh? And the usual, right? I waved a hoof as I took a seat on one of the stools. No thanks. Just turning in a few contracts. I told her as I slid a few items that I'd taken from my targets towards her. She nodded and went to the back room to collect my rewards. As I waited for the mayor to return, I pulled out a bent cigarette from my satchel and lit it. The door slammed shut behind me and some heavy hoof steps echoed throughout the room. I felt a warm breath on the back of my neck as some pony taller than myself came up behind me. Hey there, sweet cheeks. How about we get ourselves a couple drinks and you come back to my place with me and my buddies here? I turned around and let out a puff of smoke in his face. No thanks. I'm a mayor who prefers a stallion with manners. Get lost. The stallion didn't seem to take rejection well from the look on his face. His buddies behind him were silently laughing at him. I let out a yelp as his hoof pressed hard against my head, slamming and holding it down on the counter. You seem under the impression that I was asking. Now let me repeat myself in terms you'll understand. You will come with us, or I'll crush your pretty little skull like a fucking peanut. Now, you would probably assume that I'd be scared enough to go along with his demands. Unfortunately for him, I was not a mare to be messed with. I kicked out one of my hind legs and gleamed him right in the sweet spot. I swear his voice went up a few octaves. You know, I kick the shit out of idiots like you for a living, I said as I put my hoof on the back of his head. He looked up at me, tears in his eyes from the extradition pain he must have been going through. I, I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I didn't mean nothing by it, I swear. I shook my head. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Should have thought about that before getting your ass handed to you by a mare who is half your size. And I slammed his head onto the counter with a loud thunk before letting him fall to the floor, unconscious. The bartender returned shortly after with a bag of caps. Here's the 500 ca- Damn it! Can't y'all go one day without making a mess in my bar storm? I looked at her and shrugged. He asked for it. Anyways, thanks for the caps. Got any more bounties for me? She shook her head. Sorry, hun. You might have better luck in Dodge just southeast of here. I slipped the caps into my satchel and took one last puff of my cigarette before putting it out. Thanks, anyway. I'll send you a postcard from Dodge, then. And with that, I gave one last threatening glare to the stallion's friends before heading out into the rain. New Appaloosa was a small and simple town. Every pony mostly kept themselves, which was good for a small-time bounty hunter such as myself. But every now and then you got to get a know-it-all big shots like that stallion. From the look of him and his buddies, they must have been slavers from old Appaloosa, just south along the train tracks that ran outside town. I looked out across the muddy ground at the shop across from the bar I just exited. Absolutely everything, the sign read. As I pulled my hood up over my head and made my way out into the rain, I heard a couple thuds behind me. I assumed it was the unconscious stallion and his friends being thrown out of the bar. I pushed open the door to the shop with my hoof and entered. Objects ranging from the most useless things to pristine conditioned weapons lined the walls and shelves. Behind the counter sat a friendly, wall-eyed pegasus ghoul, reading a magazine with a picture of a giant muffin on the cover. I trotted up lightly to the counter and rang the little rusty bell. Excuse me, I'm here to pick up my rifle. The ghoul looked up from her magazine and smiled at me. She held up a rotted hoof, getting up and trotted to the back room, returning shortly after with my 73 scoped repeater rifle in her mouth. She laid it on the counter and pulled up an old chalkboard, quickly scribbling something on it. The mayor turned the board around to show me what was written on it. That'll be twenty caps for repairs. Or a muffin. I chuckled a bit. Sorry, Ditsy. No muffins today. I promise next time I'm in town, though. I'll definitely bring you a few. 
After paying the lovable ghoul and slinging my rifle around my back, I set out. This time, my destination was Dodge City. The rain seemed to be coming down harder than it had as I left New Appaloosa, following the tracks east. The cold air whipped around me as the storm began to pick up. Just one of the many things you get used to out here in the equestrian wasteland, I guess. I managed to avoid a few groups of raiders and old Appaloosa slavers, having to stop every now and then and take out a few from the distance. It was just starting to turn nighttime when I was close enough to see Dodge, though something was not right. The town was lit up like a bonfire. A large pillar of smoke, blacker than the sky itself, reached up into the clouds. I swung my rifle around and lay prone in the mud, looking through the scope. As far as I could see, the streets were littered with bodies, slavers and townsfolk alike. The slavers still alive were banging on doors, trying to get to the ponies hiding inside, I guessed. As soon as one of their heads was right center of my crosshairs, I pulled the trigger with my forehoof, smirking slightly as the poor bastard's head snapped forward and his friends became covered in his blood. His buddies jumped at his death and began looking around for me, ignorant to the fact that I was at least a good couple hundred meters in the opposite direction they were looking. Not that smart, are they? I ejected the spent casing and took aim once again, blowing another hole into another slaver's head. My fun was short-lived, however, when one of them figured out the direction I was in, and started rushing at me with the remaining five, six, ten slavers? Oh shit. I ejected the empty casing again and began firing at the ponies charging at me rapidly. The moment a bullet was past my head was when I decided to sling my rifle on my back and hightail it to some cover, that is, if I could find any. I managed to find an old metal wagon and leapt over it, slamming my back against the cart as bullets beat into the bottom of it. Okay, damage assessment. Going to have to get my jacket patched up, and have a local doctor uh, dig out that bullet in my flank. I winced as ice-cold rainwater hit the bleeding bullet wound. At least I don't have to worry about cleaning it, I thought to myself. As I drew the Colt 1911 from its holster on my right foreleg with my teeth, taking a deep breath before popping over the wagon and firing several shots at my attackers, taking out three of them and wounding two others. As a stinging pain filled my cheek, I dropped back down behind the cover. I put a hoof to my cheek and then looked at it. A bullet definitely grazed me. Add that to the list of wounds from this fight. I popped up again and fired another volley of rounds at the oncoming slavers, taking out two more. I screamed out in pain as one of the, their rounds tore through my right shoulder. I fired more shots and slumped back down behind the wagon, not bothering to see if any of my shots hit their mark. This fight certainly was taking its toll on me, and I was losing blood. Fast. I reloaded a fresh mag and popped up again, only to have a hoof slammed to my jaw. Hard. I must have flew a good uh, three feet before crashing down into the mud with a splash. The slaver who had hit me seemed to be the only one left, at least from what I could see. He looked down at me with fury in his expression. Well now, what's this? A mayor managed to take out some of my best guys. Bullshit. Where are your friends? I want to make them watch as I break you. He stood right over me, a bit too close for my comfort. Although, I suppose I could just have some fun with you before hoof. An evil grin appeared on his face. I was laying in the mud, dazed. Actually, afraid of what this stallion was planning to do with me and my vision was slowly fading from blood loss. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have so much fun with you. A gunshot rang out as my face was splattered with bits of the stallion's brain and blood. Before I lost consciousness, I saw a turquoise figure standing over me and the dead slaver with a pistol drawn. I regained consciousness and sat up quickly in the bed I was laying in. Bad idea. I yelped as a sharp pain shot through my shoulder and flank. After taking a moment to calm down and let the pain subside, I looked around the room I was in. Yep, that definitely was the old uh, Helping Hoof Clinic in the Dodge Marketplace. I couldn't even begin to count how many times I'd been here before. And now that my mind was a bit less foggy, that mare who saved me looked a whole lot like some pony I'd normally stop in to see. As I exited the clinic and made my way slowly through the open marketplace, I looked over the damage that had been done in the last night's attack. 
All in all, it hadn't been that bad, and probably wouldn't take too long to recover from. I looked across the storefronts, quickly finding the now and then general trade office, somewhat down the way. I took a step forward, nearly running into a pony who was carrying a whole sack of sickly looking carrots. For being the post apocalypse, some cities were still as busy as ever. I made my way across the open plaza, headed for now and then, dodging hurried ponies who were trying their best to get their caps worth at the marketplace. I breathed in heavily trying to take in the smell of cooked food across the way, only to have the pain in my shoulder flare up. Better off without the distraction of food anyway. I had a mare to thank, and business to conduct. I stepped in front of the old storefront, passing to look over the time-worn, ornate lettering that was painted on the plywood sheets that covered what had once been windows. Now and then, General Traders was the one on the left board. Best deals from here to ten pony was scrolled under the right. I put my hoof on the door before reading, closed, on the sign that sat on it. I could see her inside moving around behind the counter, and I did want to thank her for saving me, so I pulled the door open and peeked my head inside. Sorry, we're... She called out before looking up, a smile growing across her muzzle as she saw it was me. Well, I'll be. It's been a while, Miss Storm. Too long, Harmony. How are things? I walked uh, the rest of the way inside, making sure to shut the door behind me. Now that I was in the shop, an odd sight befell me. It looked like a small war had gone on in here. Half the shelves were either knocked over or broken, and most of her product that was on display was crushed, shattered, or otherwise ruined. Well, as you could tell last night, things could have been better. She sighed and started to line cans of food on the counter. Uh, marking something on a sheet of paper with each one. Last night, a couple of slavers tried to purchase my services to repair some slave collars they had found. Now, I don't rightly believe in that sort of thing after all the trouble my father had with them years ago, so I kindly told them where they could stick them. Yeah, I can see they didn't exactly appreciate that idea. I let out a light laugh. Harmony was a good mare, but goddesses did she make bad decisions sometimes. Yeah. I'm sorry I got you roped into that mess. I started. I truly am. She sighed again and continued stacking cans while she talked. I kicked the three of them out. They went and got their friends, and before I knew it, half the town was on fire, and they were killing folks left and right. She stopped and looked at the countertop, drooping her head on it with a light thud. Why, if you hadn't come along, we might have... Lost the town? I interrupted. As much as I felt sorry for the mistake she had made, it was just that, her mistake. She'll have to live with it and get over it, just like we all have to. Look, I wanted to thank you for saving my life, but the point is that we're still here, and I need work. Do you have anything for me? Anything at all? She lifted her head and frowned. Yeah, yeah. I've got something for you. She trotted over to the end of the counter, pounding on the old cash register until it opened. She bit down on a particularly old piece of paper, spinning it onto the countertop so I could read it. I trotted over to it and looked it over. Target's name, Predius, also known as Crazed Pred. Description, Unicorn, Crimson Colored Coat, Red and Black Striped Mane. Spell Level, Moderate Casting Abilities, Illusionist. Cutie Mark, Crossed Colored Pencils, Purple and Pink. Over paper with CP in red and black. Suspected location of shelter, Ponyville Ruins. Known associates, Cyan Trade Caravan based outside of Baltimore. Old Epelusa slavers. Reward, 1,000 caps alive, zero caps dead. And the folks who had commissioned the bounty seemed to stress that they needed him brought back alive. Harmony told me as I folded the paper up and slipped into my satchel. Y'all better be careful now. Ponyville ain't no place to go sloppin', and neither is old Appaloosa. I nodded in agreement. Don't you worry. You know I'm careful. I slipped off my jacket and threw it on the counter. During last night's attack, my jacket got a bit torn up. I was hoping you'd be able to patch it up for me. Also, I need a box of 44. 
Well, it ain't that bad looking. Give me a few minutes and I'll see what I can do for you. Harmony hoofed the jacket across the countertop and set it inside somewhere. Go get yourself something to eat, and you can pick up the rest of your supplies when you get back. She waved her hoof dismissively. Now go on. Get. I'll have this good and new for you in no time at all. Just you watch. I nodded and thanked the mayor before leaving the shop. My stomach rumbled fiercely as the smell of food hit me like a brick wall. Normally I don't eat that much, but since I hadn't eaten in two days thanks to uh, certain complications, I was surprised that I hadn't caused the radgator kebab stand to run out of food in the ten minutes it took uh, to chow down. Now, with a full stomach, I sat back against the cracked wall and stared at the cloudy sky through the broken girders that was that what must have once been an impressive skylight before the war. The clouds were lighter than usual, which meant there was no danger of rain. And just as I had closed my eyes to rest, I heard loud metallic footsteps echo across the street, which was odd since that was the only thing I heard. One moment ago, the entire marketplace was as busy as possible. Now it was dead silent, save for the hoof steps. I looked forward and spotted a group of steel rangers surrounding what I assumed to be one of their scribes, heading right for the now and then trade office. Normally, any pony would go and see what they were about, but I personally hated sticking my muzzle where it didn't belong. I've gotten several scars before finally learning my lesson. After the noise from the crowd resumed, I stood up and headed over to the gun runners standing across the road, checking out a few rifle mods, knowing that I couldn't really upgrade my own rifle. As I made my way back to Harmony's shop, I spotted the group of steel rangers leaving, a smug look on the scribe's face. Hey, what was that all about? I asked as I entered the building and walked up to the counter. Harmony sat my jacket and a box of 44 rounds on the counter for me. Oh, they want to annex Dodge. Apparently they already own Baltimore and are working on New Appaloosa. Your total comes to 100 caps for repairs and ammo. 100 caps? That's a bit much. I looked around the half-cleared store. Though I guess most of your stock did go bye-bye. After reluctantly giving one-tenth of my total caps, I frowned. Why do they want to own Dodge? The Steel Rangers have no interest in trade cities, do they? I asked. Harmony shrugged. Don't know, but as long as uh, I get to continue running things, I got no problems. Something didn't sit right with me about this whole ordeal, but I pushed those thoughts to the back of my mind. Right now, I needed to head off and track this Prius down. Anyway, thanks for patching my jacket. I'll send you a postcard from Ponyville. And with that, I turned around and left the shop after slipping my jacket on and pulling the bullets into my satchel. The road leaving the town had dried up a bit and was no longer sloshing through knee-deep mud. Ponyville was directly northeast of my current location, so that's where I was headed. I gave one last glance at Dodge City before setting off on my own again down the old broken road. Name, Storm Rider, Level 13. Skills, Barter 40, Big Guns 15, Energy Weapons 17, Explosives 17, Lock Picking 45, Medicine 35, Melee Weapons 20, Small Guns 75, Sneak 60, Speech 30, Unarmed 17, Special, Strength 6, Perception 9, Endurance 4, Charisma 6, Intelligence 8, Agility 6, Luck 5, Perks, Intense Training 4, Black Widow, Friend of the Night, Rapid Reload, Swift Learner 3, Travel Light, Quick Draw, Traits, Small Frame, Trigger Discipline.